Meet Bob, probably like you, he's in the gray area on where to start his thesis dissertation. I don't blame him, it's somehow intimidating. The first step is always the hardest, agree? But with dissertation, it feels like every step is. From selecting anything under the sun as your topic, to gathering data of what, when, where, why, and how, to the grueling moment of presenting your findings to your advisors. Yeah. Fret not. Here in KMV Consulting, we digest the stress of every step for you, and help you sort things out from step 1 to step 99, or 1000 whichever applies. KMV Consulting welcomes you, to Thesis Dissertation 101, this video will discuss how dissertation unravels from conception, to execution. The sole purpose of a thesis, or a research is because of an inquiry, of something you want to know about, a thing under the sun, you want to explore. Research, starts with a question. But first, we have to know what is, and is not, a research question. Your research question is not data. Although data helps you in your thesis, and they play a huge role in your paper and its outcome, the questions are not your data, and should not be data. The same way that a research question, is not a statistical analysis. Since most analysis rely heavily on data or data itself. But what is a research question, really? Hang in there Bob. I got you. Let me help you get your, hashtag winning research question. This is for you hashtag, Bob the researcher. A good research question should have a yes, on these following questions. Does it address outstanding, theoretical issues in your field? Second, does it have significance? And lastly, can it be solved? Now, think of your question that has yes, in those three questions asked. If it got a three yes, then it's a yes. Now, let's take a look, at how your question should look like. Should it be too broad? Like how supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, is spelled. Or should it be too narrow, like how OK, is turned into ONK? Well, if a question is too broad, meaning it will tackle, sua, many bases, chances are it will not be answerable. While, if it's too narrow, it will not be compelling, or it may be, generalizable. You may work with, a committee. Or this might be a requirement, in your university. Some tips for you, don't be afraid to have informational interviews. This will help you get to know them, and what they can help you with. Take professors slash faculty for a test drive. Try if they fit in your professional attitude, are they retiring or currently searching for another position. This is one of the personal connections you can make, now that you have them on board. Let's discuss your relationship to your committee you will be working closely. So make sure to communicate what they need, and learn to compromise and enjoy each other's academic presence. Don't be afraid to offer structure to the working relationship. Get organized. That way you can see the bigger picture in clearer lenses. Figure out how each committee member prefers to communicate slash work. Come up with a plan of how you will communicate. Emails. Phone calls. Regular appointments. How often. Meeting agendas. Let them know what will happen, at least give them pre-briefing instructions, this actually saves time. Calendars slash deadlines, make sure you all are in sync. Especially with dates and deadlines. To CC or not to CC? That is the question, well for me, if this concerns the whole committee make sure to CC everyone. But on the other hand, if the issue is just for one member, make sure to email slash message them privately. Here comes the first nerve wracking part, presenting the proposal. Although this depends on your department or university, it's good to make sure that we discuss this just in case you are required to do this Bob. Two important things to always consider on every paragraph in the proposal. 
Are you staying focused on your research question? Stick to one thing, what you need to know, what you want to explore, this will give the impression of uniformity and the solidarity of your thesis. Do you have the concerns of your committee in mind? You are in the group, and as much as you want your concern addressed, the people who work with you are also entitled to express their concerns, make sure everyone is heard. But hey, how does a proposal looks? It must have the basics. Introduction. Problem statement. Theoretical framework. Data collection and analytical methods. Significance. Timeline. I suggest you ask for examples so you know what and how to execute your proposal properly. But where to get them? Ask the department administrator slash faculty if they have examples of past proposals on file. These proposals are already approved, meaning, they have the standards, following their format will make it easier for you to win the hearts. Ask friends and past students who have passed the proposal stage to share theirs with you. Again because these are already revised to be approved. The best way to learn how to write a proposal is to read one. Knowledge is power Bob. Make sure to look for examples and absorb their strengths and use it to your advantage. Now that your research question is made, and your proposal is approved, we can now use them as the building blocks of your course of actions. Well aside from me and your group, if there's any, I have yet to introduce you, to your new group of friends in writing your thesis. Friend 1. The Outline. The more detailed the outline, the easier it can be to write. Friend 2. Writing groups or circles. Keep tabs on each other's progress. Make sure to save time by not repeating a part of a thesis. In this way you can monitor who's doing what part. Friend 3. Calendar. Develop a calendar for each stage of the project. Figure out a writing schedule. Not only for the long term but daily goals. This will help the group track what is done and what you missed. Now that you all are friends, let's start distributing the tasks. Mainly, you have to choose between the rule of three, introduction, body and conclusion. Basically, introduction, Tell them what you are going to tell them. Body, tell them. Conclusion, tell them what you told them. And per paragraph. Link to previous paragraph. Start a paragraph by having a link to the previous one. Details. Elaborate what you need to express, numbers, sentences, phrases, quotations and the like. Conclude and link to the next paragraph to stay cohesive. Just get out that first crappy draft. It's okay, let that whole paragraph go, better paragraphs will come later on. It's part of the process Bob. Get your words onto paper first and then worry about refining the argument. This video is brought to you by KMV Consulting.